again. Every week I get going and I forget to put that confession up there because I'm trying to remember all things going on. And, and the world's gone crazy. I want to say again. Went from, went from you can't get on the street and now you can't even find a place on the street. Amen. Civil uh, uh, unrest. It's all. The Bible is fulfilling itself because when it says the nation in the last days, nation shall rise against nation, it's really ethnic group against ethnic group. We're seeing stuff happening in front of us right before our eyes. The Bible is unfolding. We're on the way out of here. But on the way out of here, we're going to make a difference. Okay? I don't want to go out of here kicking and screaming. I don't want to go out of here being afraid of my own shot. I want to go out of here knowing that I make a difference for the Lord. Amen. I want to make a difference because you know what? There's a lot of good people around here. In my life. There's a lot of good people around here. Amen. And we can pull together and we can make a difference. Amen. Amen. But right now, let's just say this is the to me. This is the most important two hours of my week. Say that. This is the most important two hours of my week. And just tweet this out. I'm not going to waste it, Lord. Help me to focus on you. And I trust you. To handle everything that's going crazy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Give Lord a hand down to pray. Thank you. 
you've got your everything revealed right there in front of you.
God good? All the time. God is good. I, I, I don't know if y'all been watching television, but it's, it's confusing. It's, everything is so confusing, and, and uh, it just blows me away. There's, there's one person that you don't hear about much in all of this, and it's Jesus. Jesus was the greatest liberator that ever lived. Jesus was the greatest of all ever. Whenever he showed up on the scene, things always got better. I believe that today, we as Christians, if we can show Jesus, get out of your opinions, we all got them. Amen. But opinions are like armpits. You usually got more than one, they usually smell bad. Everybody's got opinions. Get beyond your opinion. Find what the Word says. Hold on to the Word of God. And let the people see you shine. Now is the time for the city on the hill. They cannot be hid. People see it. Now is the time not to hide your light under a bushel, but pull it up. Let people see it. Amen. And it's my desire to live for Him. It's my desire to show Him. Amen. Let's sing that again. Let's sing that again. Y'all, let's sing it together. But 
Jesus is trying to show them, I'm not trying to be king here on earth. I'm trying a temporary thing. I'm trying to be king forever. Amen. And I want you to see this. And so does George Floyd and David Dorn, the 77-year-old. He was a black man too, 77-year-old, retired captain from the police force. They put him on Facebook dying. I don't know if y'all saw that or not. But he was there bleeding out on Facebook, and he was killed. Nobody's even talking about him. You know, so there's all kinds of stuff going on. You know, there's a lot of people being hurt, and there's a lot of death going on. And so, yes, George Floyd, when I heard the exact details of what happened, it made me sick at my stomach. Sick at my stomach. And that should never be allowed to be done ever in our country, anywhere, especially in our country. What happened to David Dorn should never be allowed to, to happen. But again, the answers... The answer is putting Jesus out front. Amen? Now, now, so, so let's watch this now. I know it's very controversial, and I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to, to, to uh, voice my opinion about anything, because like I said, opinions like armpits, we all got a couple, you know, but, but again, what happened was terrible in the peaceful protest. That's okay. That's what, we're, that's what the country was built on, peaceful protest. But this looting and rioting is out of hand, and that does not. That's hurting innocent people that are actually in for. I even saw one guy, he actually told the guys that are breaking in the store. He said, I'm for you. I'm on your side. They broke through his store and took his stuff. And he said, I'm here with you. I'm, 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 I'm with you. And they just broke right on through. So, you know, again, there comes a time when it's beyond what we're trying to do. The, the violence and the, the violence and the looting and the killing is actually squelching out the, the, the actual peaceful protest. Just take it out of here. Because that's all you see. And, and, and so, again, this is something. So, so what's the answer? You know, and I, I, this is why I got the scripture right here. You know, I prayed about it. Y'all prayed about it. I know you did. You know, where you at, Jesus? Well, why aren't you standing up? Why well, don't I hear you? You know, where you at, God? Has anybody said that lately? You know, as I watch all these things go on. You know, uh, uh, where was he at for that eight, eight and a half minutes? Where was he at when the man was saying, please let me breathe? Where, where was he at? Where was he at when that 77-year-old man, uh, the police officer, was, was shot bleeding out, and the two suspects run out and, and left him on Facebook Live, people seeing him die? Where was Jesus? I know it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Okay, so, so, so again, let me try to bring some, some continuity in here. And address the situation, not hide my head in the sand. You know, because there's changes need to be made. There are definitely changes need to be made. But 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 let's not do knee-jerk changes. Let's do systematic, problematic changes that actually make a difference. You know, so, so here we are. Uh, where are you, Jesus? Uh, why have you been here? Now, now of course, uh, very simply, you know, uh, the Bible talks about Lazarus. Lazarus was a good friend of Jesus. He actually grew up with Jesus. They, they were good friends. Him and Mary and Martha, they, they were the four amigos. And, and Jesus is off ministering, and Mary and Martha call out and say, Our brother's sick. Can you come take care of him? Come and just lay your hands on him, heal him. And Jesus acted like to them that he weren't paying attention. Now, he was because he told his disciples something different. But we're gonna, I'm going to break this down really strong over the next, this week and next week. And again, everybody has their opinions. And I respect the right for you to have your opinion because yesterday was the 76th anniversary of 150,000 troops storming Normandy. Those guys stormed Normandy so we could have the freedom to have an opinion. Okay? So y'all have, everybody's got a right to their opinion. I will not, I promise you, I will not hold your opinion against you. You have it. I support you to have your opinion. Okay? So, so that's not it. I'm talking about, let's get Jesus in this. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Let's get Jesus here, okay? So, 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 uh, very simply, you know, uh, very, I got it up here. You can look it up in your Bible if you want to. Just gonna, one, one verse. Jesus had waited four days, had not showed up. Waited two days after he heard it, even walked back, start walking back. So, it's been four days and Jesus goes up and he talks to Mary and Martha and Martha says unto Jesus, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. Let us pray. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. 
I thank you, God, that in the middle of all this chaos with the, with the COVID-19 and the civil unrest and uh, the revelation of, 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 of bad apples on both sides and the revelation of violence on both sides and the revelation of what's going on in these last days, you said it was going to happen and it's happening and it's happening so fast now that you can hardly even keep up with. Father, help me, Lord, today to give our people here and our people on Facebook not an opinion, but a compass and a map. That's all I can do is give a compass and a map. And, Father, let everybody find their way in all of this. Lord, I trust you. I give it to you. And I know that you've got this. I wear it on my arm every day. I look at it all the time. God has got this. Lord, in the name of Jesus, minister to us all. We thank you for it. The church said it. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 here it is. Very simple. Uh, where was he? Well, why did he take so long? Why did they not see him step in? Because if he hadn't stepped in, that would have died. If he had stepped in when they thought he should, then there wouldn't have been this chaos of his death. And there wouldn't have been this chaos in there with the mourners and all this and the, the weeping and the, 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 the grave and the funeral and all this stuff. If Jesus had stepped in when they thought he should, it would all been taken care of. There's a lot of stuff right now, not just with George Floyd's death, but the other circumstances, the COVID-19, all this stuff. You know, with David Dorn, all, all this stuff. You know, uh, there was a police officer, a deputy sheriff killed last night, assassinated. A sergeant. He had a pregnant wife and a little baby, a little child. You know, just a couple of days ago, more police, uh, uh, not just killed, but assassinated. And they even had a picture where they come up behind him, and one guy come up and was shouting, uh, 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 not racist terms, the guy was was shouting terrorist terms and grabbed a knife and, and stabbed the officer in the neck and grabbed his gun and started shooting officers. The guy on the security camera, you see it right there. And you can hear what he said because the, the police officer had a body cam on. And he shot and he's in a terrible condition right now. So there's all this stuff's going on around us and it's so confusing that, 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 that you don't know who's right and who's wrong totally. You know what I'm saying? We don't know exactly, you know, what to do in this situation? What to do in that situation? What would I do if this happened? Because there's so much happening at one time and it's all coming in so fast that it actually takes our breath away. You know, I, I personally am not somebody that gets startled fast and startled quick and I don't normally, you know, see me get all upset over things. And, and some of this stuff has actually, has several times has got my, got my spirit stirred and I had to stop and breathe. And I said, wait a minute, God's got this. This is for His glory. God's got this. God's got this. And you can tell by the mighty armies, if I can pull them up, you know, what I've been sending out for the last uh, a few days in the mighty army. How many get mighty army? Yeah. And so uh, you can see in the past few days, of course, today is take control of your emotions before your emotions take control of you. What I've seen a lot is a lot of emotions. You know, and, and not thinking, just emotions. And a great future doesn't require a great past. Even though we've got some bad stuff, there's a great future ahead if we trust God. Watch this. God knew it would come to this. It's okay. He has a plan. The day before that, the heaviest burdens that we carry are the thoughts in our heads. Then the problem is sin, not skin. The answer is grace, not race. Jesus died for all. Our nation needs Jesus. So, so there's some stuff. So, and here... One of my favorite sayings of all times, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Martin Luther King Jr. Wow. Some powerful, powerful stuff. And so if we can keep our head on our shoulder and, and, and not get all emotional and let it get the best of us, then, we, then once, you get, once your emotions take over, then you start doing things that later on you'll regret. You may even wind up in jail over. Okay, you may even wind up in prison over. I talk to guys all the time in penitentiary and go, you know, I had a perfect record. I talked to somebody yesterday. He said, I had a perfect record till this. 
And they said, I thought I was only going to be here for a month. I've been here for a year. Wow. They said, I just don't understand. It was just one, one thing. My emotions got me one time. And I've been here for a year. So, so again, don't let your emotions get the best of you. So I said, Martha and Mary, their emotions are, are in turmoil right now because they're, they're crying. And they're saying, if, if you'd have been here, you wouldn't have died. So let's, so let's just look at this story of, of Lazarus and Martha and Mary. Let's look at it from a different viewpoint. Now, now, now uh, uh, if you look at Bethany, you know, matter of fact, when I see Bethany, as much as you want, God wanted to get me to show you the place where they're at is Bethany. I think about my own Bethany when I think about the meaning of Bethany. Because Bethany means house of joy and house of pain. Wow. Somebody say wow. wow. You know, house of joy, house of pain. The same thing that can cause you a lot of joy can cause you a lot of pain. You know, Bethany, coming up, there was a lot of joy. Especially right there at the end, there was a lot of pain. But even in the middle of the pain, there was joy. My Bethany. I'm not talking about my Bethany. I'm talking about Jesus' Bethany. I'm not talking about Bethany Linton. I'm talking about Bethany, the town. It means house of joy, house of pain. It was a house of joy when Lazarus was alive and everything was going good, but as soon as things turned, it became a house of pain. I can look right now, United States. It has many times been a house of joy, but it's also been a house of pain, sometimes simultaneously. House of joy, house of pain. I can think of my own life. That there's things going on that bring joy and there's things going on that bring pain. I see it back and forth all the time. But Bethany was like that, house of joy, house of pain. Now, now, now it, it's intriguing. You know, that is a fact of life. The thing that can bring you to be your source of joy can also be your source of pain. Why? Think about it. Think about it. The same thing that can bring you immense joy can bring you some powerful pain. And it hurts. Okay? Some of y'all in here right now, some of the things that has brought some amazing stuff to you right now, you're looking back and saying, what happened to all that good stuff? Why is it turned so bad? Why is it turned sour? Why well, I found the worm in my apple. You know what's worse than finding a worm in an apple? It's finding half a worm. Okay? So so here you go. So 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 I'm, I'm asking this question here. You know, again, let's just let's just look at this different, a different viewpoint. Why if he'd have been there? Why 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 was he really there? Let me just tell you something. Listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Because I think it has a I think this has a message for our nation too. I think it also addresses what we're going through with the, with the COVID virus. You know, one thing that doesn't help all the civil unrest is everybody's been locked up for eight weeks. That doesn't help. People have been locked up for eight weeks. Some of them haven't had jobs. You know, they haven't been, and, and the checks haven't got to them, and, and they've been trying to find a way to, to, to get stuff to feed their family. And, and so with all that already causing tension, that was already a very tensional situation, and people want to go and start opening back up, then this happened, and then so, so now you've got a fuel, a fire already burning, and now you've got another fire burning, and you throw them together, and you've got a perfect storm. So here's that perfect storm. So then, now, so watch this down. Watch carefully. Where's God in all this? Uh, why is He allowing this? Why did He just go poof and it stopped? Why did He just stand up? Why, where's Moses with His rod? And holds his rod up and, and divides the Red Sea and, and they walk on dry ground. Where, where is that? See, so watch this. Watch, watch. In the middle of all this, believe it or not, in the middle of all this, in the middle of your pain, whatever your pain may be, and you wonder, work, why can't I take care of my pain? He wants to perfect you, not pamper you. Ow. Slow it down. He wants to perfect you, not pamper you. And he wants to challenge our faith. You see, if all you got, remember I told you last week, if all you got is sunshine, then you wind up in the desert. If everything's not getting away all the time, honestly, life will get boring. And you'll get spoiled. You know, you can tell just as good as somebody that's been spoiled, got everything they ever wanted, hand it to them on a silver platter, because you honestly, you ever been around somebody like that? Isn't it kind of hard to work with somebody like that? Isn't it kind of hard to be around?
ask somebody that because any little thing comes along they can't handle it because they've never understood what it's like to have trouble. They've never understood what it's like to have to dig out their own hole. DC and Daniel told me many times that day the best thing he ever done when we were coming up was let us, let us learn to dig our way out. Because Daniel taught us how to be him. Okay? So, so again, if Jesus had been there, they would not have discovered seven things that need to know. Okay? Seven things. We're only going to go through a couple of them today. Uh, and then we'll finish it up next week. But again, I want you to pay close attention. If you're taking notes, please take notes. This is, this is something I really want you to think and I want you to understand. Because right now, there is a lot of people that are crying out. Okay? They're, they're not, their protesting is not out in the street. Their protesting is in their prayer closet. And they're crying out and asking God where is he at. I guarantee you every church that's open this day, there's people crying out right now. The churches are crying out, God, where are you? We need your help. We need you to step in here. We need you to take control. And so, so here we are. You know, so, so here's seven things you need to know. N number one, don't you know this? God always. God always. Somebody say always. Always. God always hears your cries. Uh, uh, verses 1 through 5, we'll read the Phillips translation. Lazarus, who became seriously ill, he became seriously ill. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, your friend is ill. When Jesus received the message, he said, This illness is not meant to end in death. Huh? We watched him die. This illness is not meant to end in death. It's going to, be, it's going to bring glory to God. For if it will show the glory of God, for it will show the glory of the Son of God. So when he heard of Lazarus' illness, he stayed where he was two days longer. Wow. He sent word that this, this was not going to end in death, and they watched him die. I promise you all the stuff that's happening right now with the illness, with the COVID and, and the civil unrest and all that, Eventually, eventually, there's going to be some meaning. And there's going to be literal mediators that can actually bring sides together and we can talk. But it's got to, everybody's got to get the emotions out of the way so they can talk and actually really do something. I don't talk about talking about doing it. Really do something. Really, really do something. You know, uh, Daniel. Daniel had been praying and for 21 days. He hadn't heard from God. And, and, and he's out here fasting trying to get a, get, get a revelation of the revelation being given. And finally, uh, uh, on the 21st day, uh, the angel, Michael, came and said, I, I heard you on the first day. Jesus heard you on the first day. God heard you. But there was a battle going on. And I had to fight this battle to take care of before you could be heard. So, so, so Jesus is talking to him and says, I got Michael, we all got together and we had to fight this battle. Does that mean that the devil's more powerful than Jesus? No. But it's showing literally that satanic power is very strong. And satanic power can bring darkness in your life. And you can think, well, why did Jesus just go ahead and take care of the darkness in my life? Because many times he wants you to see and he wants you to grow and he wants you to get some spiritual meat on your bones. Then when they're on the boat, Master cares not that we perish. Yes, he cares that they perish. But again, he wanted them to see what it's like to fight and to struggle in order to grow spiritually. Now remember this now. I notice this might not be the most awesome sermon you've ever heard, but I hope that it's going to be one that opens up eyes. You know, uh, the reason... Oh, excuse me. Whatever he permits to enter in the arena of our lives. Think about this now. This is careful. Whatever you might be having a problem with your job, you're having a problem with your family, you're having a problem in your own life, you're having a health problem. Whatever. Whatever God permits to enter in the arena of our lives, he has purpose wrapped up in it. If God allows it, then there's a purpose there. Purpose is wrapped all around that chaos. There's, there's, a, there's a purpose. There's a purpose wrapped up in this COVID-19. There's a purpose wrapped up in this civil unrest. There's a purpose wrapped up in a lot of this stuff. We can sit back and we can be opinionated or we can go to God and give it to Him and say, okay, God, I, I need you to open my eyes 
Show me what I'm supposed to do, but most of all, let me show you. Let me be a beacon in the middle of this. Okay? So, 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 again, the reason we don't always see, the reason we don't always feel, the reason we don't always experience answers, I'm getting ready to show you. In the next six things, I'm only going to do, let's see, how many am I going to do today? I'm only going to do, let's see, 21. I know, I'm only going to do three. I'm going to do three things today, and we'll do the next, next week. Okay? Okay. So, number one, God always hears our cries. Y'all know that? Always. Number two, it's always too early to give up on God. Always. Somebody say always. Always. It's always too early to give up on God. Always. Verse 4 says, when he heard this, Jesus said that this sickness is not unto death, no, it's to glor for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. So, so, so you got to understand something when things are going on. Again, do you think, do you think, honestly, do you think that God was up in heaven wringing his hands and sucking on the bottle of Malox when COVID-19 became a pandemic? You think he did that? No. He knew it was coming. Do you, do you think that, that, that God's up in heaven now going, I don't know what to do, it's going crazy down there. I have no idea what to do. No. God is in control. Period. Somebody say that with me. God is in control. Period. Alright. So now, that's why he wrote the book, the, the, the John wrote the book of Revelation. So you would know when this stuff starts happening. God is letting you know it's coming. And he's letting you know, I'm already in control. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm in control. And in the end, I will make sure everything is taken care of. Okay? So now, now, two things. God always has a plan. And his plan always includes time. Think about it. God always has a plan. Y'all say plan. plan. Now say time. Uh -huh. That's right. When Jesus started that he said the sick son of death before the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified thereof, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Now let me show you something. I know you've heard this. This is a cliche, but I'm not meaning this as a cliche. Delays with God are not denials. Delays are not denials. The Bible says now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, and when he had heard that he was sick, he abode still two days in the same place where he was. Wait a minute. <coughs> How many of us, when we hear somebody sick, we immediately rush to the hospital? I know I do as a pastor. When I find somebody in the hospital, I go right in. You know, can you imagine... You're really, really sick, and your loved one, your spouse, or your children, or your siblings, they find out you're sick and in terrible condition, and you're laying there, and maybe you could go out of here, and they just say, I'll be there after I finish watching Bonanza. This is my favorite episode. I'll be there after I watch The Expendables, because this is the one I really like, you know, because, you know, Terry Crews is in this, and I think he's awesome. Or just, you know what? I know God's got a plan. I'll be there when God tells me to go. <laughs> I have a problem with any one of those. I'm there and I could die. I like to have my family around me. Amen? You know, DC and Daniel, I told DC and Daniel years ago, uh, I said, if I'm ever, this was a year, but they were little bitty things. They said, Daddy, because we were doing a lot of funerals, and they said, and we were doing, we still are still around a bunch of bed sides. And they said, Daddy, why did, and they were like, I don't know, four and seven, five and seven, seven and back, something like that. They said, Daddy, what, what are we going to do if that's you? And I said, here's what I want you to do. I want one of you to grab one hand and the other one to grab the other. I want you to hold them up. And say, my daddy can't talk right now, but he's already told us what to say. And that is, my daddy believes in the power of God. To raise the sick and even raise the dead. And we're holding my daddy's hand up and we're praying that prayer for him right now. But either way, daddy knows he wins. Wow. So, it's always too early. Always, always, always too early to give up on God. So watch this. Here we go. Let's 
this gets, it gets a little further here. Is this good stuff? Yeah. All right. What does this mean for you today? God not being there when you need him. The COVID, the civil unrest, other things involved too, the economy and and jobs and it's just this crazy stuff's going on here. So what's it mean today? First off, let me say this. Being a Christian does not mean we'll never go through storms. Don't you think because you're a Christian you're not going through anything? That's far from the truth. I think I went through more things once I gave my life to Jesus. I went through more things than I ever went through before I got saved. I even had some people in my family say, dude, you, you seem to have a pretty well made you got saved, and now it's like you're always going through something. You sure you want to do this? I said, yeah, I'm sure I want to do this. Yeah. Okay. The situations in your life that's bigger than your capacity to handle, then take it to God in prayer. God allows us to get in over our head so many times. Because until you get in over your head, you won't trust Him like you should. I remember as a little boy, first time I went to the pool, the very first time I went to the pool, I was raised in Pamela County, didn't even know what a pool was. I was used to I was used to being stuck in sand and getting my lip, my feet on barnacles and getting getting jellyfish wrapped around my legs. That's all I remember. I remember the first time I went in the pool. I jumped in the pool. I was on, on the diving board. I jumped in the pool. Little bit thing. I jumped in and I went, uh oh, there's no bottom. So I, I made myself over to the side and for the first I don't know how long we were there, a couple of hours. I just stayed on the side of the pool where I could grab my hand and have something to hold on to. And I went to the shower hand. As long as I could, my feet touched the ground, I was fine. If I weren't touching the ground, I had to reach over and have my hand. You know what? Some of us in here right now, that's what we're trying to do. And God says, I need you to deep in where you got to trust me. I need you in over your head. Then we can talk about growth. I need you in over your head. Then you can talk about power. So, so, so when you pray, remember, you're not sending breaking news to God. Huh. Let me break that one up. That's, that's, that's awesome. When you pray, you're not sending breaking news to God. He knows everything that has and will ever happen to you. He knows your beginning from your end, your end from your beginning. So, remember, just said a while ago, whatever He allows, He wraps it up in purpose. Okay? So now, remember, His time is not our time. It's that. His time is not our time. And his time is not our time. Never. No, no, no. Never give up on God. Say it. Never give up on God. No matter how bad it looks. Okay. Here's the last one. Then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go on home. Number three. God can resurrect whatever's dead in your life. I need to say that again because I, every time I look at that, I have to stop and think about my own self and think about things. God can resurrect your dead things. You see, Jesus found Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. He waits two days and he takes off from Bethany. So after he arrives, he's already, he's already been dead four days. By this point, He's legally dead. Why did he wait four days? Let, let, let me explain something. The, the, the Sadducees were different than the Pharisees. The, the Sadducees didn't believe in the spirits of life after death, but the Pharisees did. And so they believed that the spirit of man hovered over his body for three days. That's what they believed. And so on the fourth day, all chances of resurrection would be gone because the body would no longer be hovering over the, the spirit would no longer be hovering over the body. And so they believed then on the fourth day it was over and there was no chance of resurrection. Wow. Wow. So Jesus says, I'm going to show them a miracle, but I'm going to show them something that's going to rock their world, it's going to blow their mind, it's going to. Do something that they never imagined could happen. So, according to Jewish custom, he was legally dead. 
And now, 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 now something special was getting ready to happen. You know why? Because watch this now. Watch, watch. Jesus arrives first out of the professional mourners are there. You know, they showed, I watched it, they showed last night where people were actually, uh, they're getting paid to protest. They're, they're actually, they're giving them money and they're telling them what to do and they're showing them stuff. Now, now, I really don't believe this was the protesters. I believe this was the rioters and they're thinking in Antifa and some other militant groups. They're going in and they're paying people to protest and cause discord and trying to cause a race war and all kinds of things. But I saw, I saw it. Giving them money and saying, here's what you're going to do. And seeing the bricks put out in front of the, of the, of the buildings and the bricks uncovered so they can throw it into the, into the windows. Now, that's not the protesters doing that. That's whoever's causing these riots. They're the ones that are causing this. It's a whole different, it's two different, it's hard to distinguish between them because when emotions get high, it is really so messed up you can't tell one from the other. But, it's, but, but, but again, there's nothing wrong with our country was built on peaceful protest. It was built on peaceful protest. Okay? But this other stuff is just pure destruction. It's, you can't fight evil with evil. You can't drive out darkness with darkness. You've got it only love. And Jesus even said, said or, or in Romans chapter 11 and 12, uh, is talking about you can't return evil for evil, but you return good for evil. I've got somebody to take care of that for you. Okay? So, so, so here we go. And these professional mourners there, they were paid to lament. They were paid to wail. They were paid to scream. They were paid to fall over the fire. They were, they were just paid to do all this stuff. So they had the professional mourners there. The body itself was prepared and wrapped in grave clothes. The body itself had already begun to stink. Okay? So, so again, they would wait several days anyway before they would seal the tomb. They wanted to make sure the body was decaying. And that's how they knew they were actually dead. They were not in a, in a coma or something because they, the body began to, to, to stink. All right, so the body had already began to stink. And the situation actually seemed very, very hopeless. But Jesus is getting ready to move on now. Why everybody stand? Everybody stand. DC, come on up here. Y'all guys, come on up and play. Hey, but I say one thing. Yes, sir. I had a thought coming to me a while ago. That might be a terrible thing. But you know, the question, where he is and where was Jesus? It was asked. Any of you guys ever been on the Mayus Walk or you ladies been on the Mayus Walk? You heard a talk about Christian action. There are three points of that talk, at least three. One, we are the hands, we are the feet, and we are the voice of Jesus in the present time. Where are we?
situations in your life that seems dead, over, and stinky. It can be in your finances, it can be in your family, it can be in your own body. It can be as some results from the COVID-19, the civil unrest. God wants to step in and show you. But He has a plan and He has time. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here right now and you got some dead things in your life and you're needing the Lord to step in and do what only He can do. Nobody looking around. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Would you raise that hand? Yeah, I got some dead things. I got some stinking things in my life, Jesus. I got some stinking things, but just raise that hand. I got some stinking things. I got some crazy things. I just need God to take care of them. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Maybe you're here and some of the stinking things drove you from God instead of to God. And you're needing God to help you. Get back in there with Him. So you can watch Him raise it. So you can watch Him. If you're here today and somehow or another and out there in Facebook land and you let these situations drive you from God and you're needing God to come back into your life. Nobody looking around. Nobody, nobody, no eyes open. But you raise that hand and say, yeah, I, I, need, I need a closer walk. I need a closer walk. I definitely need a closer walk. Bless the Lord. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Let's pray together.
I just wanted to stress a point is that sometimes people come back when they realize it's safe to come back. Amen? And when they see it's safe to come back, you'll see them again. All right. So now, any of your hearts and minds clear? When you go out today, shine. Wherever you go, shine. That's the very beginning of being his hands and his feet is to shine, to be his mouth. Shine. You see somebody need help, help them. You see somebody struggling, help them. You will become his hands and feet. That's the very bottom. That's the very focal point. The very first thing is to be the light where you're at. And when you're the light where you're at, immediately things change. And then as God opens up the opportunity, you start shining. Wherever you can shine, you shine. And watch what God will do. Amen. That's why I say God's got this. God's got it. Amen. Well, Steve, we just miss some prayer, please. Oh, God, we just pray you, Lord, we love you. We know that you have a situation where you can grow. Lord, just give us hope and give us the faith, the strong faith, to do the right thing when the time comes. Help us to, to just spread your word. And Lord, everything will turn out good. And Lord, we pray you to give you. Glory to God for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.